Hello everyone, welcome back to Howard Bright Rose Studios Off The Mag. Had a great pleasure of finally getting to interview my friend Jason Teesman, a wonderful, really great bird photographer who I've been trying to get on to my show for about two years now. We were able to sit down, he was back from a, a trip to, I think, um, Latin America. Um, let's jump into our conversation. Jason Teesman, welcome to Howard Brightrose off the mag. Been impressed with your bird photography, you know, since we met a couple of years ago. Been following you on Instagram. Know that you've had some, you know, a little bit of health issues and stuff like that. But it's really awesome that you're, um, you know, you're keeping it, you're keeping up and you're traveling to all these exotic ports of call. You know, you. so I know you probably have a trip coming up. So tell us a little bit about your next trip. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually planning a trip um, back to Panama with some friends from California, my girlfriend. So it will kind of be like a birding slash cultural, maybe some snorkeling, you know, just kind of a little bit of everything. Um, but I got a really good friend there named Jasanel that I met back in 2019. And um, he's been keeping an eye on some birds that I really want to photograph. So Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, you guys are always looking for the you guys are always looking for the next best bird, you know. Well, you know, the thing is, I've I've already got a lot of them birds in that area, you know. Nothing like even my last trip to Columbia, I didn't even start getting new birds until like I was a week into the trip oh, no because kidding. I've already been to that area. Yeah. But so I just focus on the photography part. But um there's a bird called a black crown and pizza that my friend has been kind of working with in panama like they kind of feed it and give it worms and call it and they these rare endemic tough birds start coming in so that's where i'm going that's what i'm going to try for cool. so. so i'm waiting um at some point in march pelicans actually come to that lagoon in batavia illinois along yeah, the yeah, yeah. river Yep, the, the so American I'm pelican. looking forward. I read that in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago. So now I'm I'm on the lookout for the pelicans. Oh, they yeah. come by the thousands, man. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of birds because my wife feeds the birds. I think I told you that. So yeah, we have a yeah. lot of birds. You know, um, we have some cool ones. Got uh the rose breasted gross beak comes, stays oh, for two days, stays, stays for two days and takes off. And then um, <laughs> you know, because they're they're migrators and then We'll, you know, then once all of the finches kind of settle in, because we get a lot of finches, nice. um, we get an indigo bunting that that comes back. I really love them. You know, and they're so they're so the tiny. You know, do you, if you get the purple finches or not? We get um, house finches, we get yellow finches, and we do get some purple finches, but they're right. those are like. Those are the birds we write down. Those are the birds we write down in our Audubon book. We have an Audubon book and we put right. post-its in it. Saw it, you know, May 16th, 2002. You know, <laughs> day for a day. Yeah. yeah. Because like because some of them just come and like all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah. 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 You know, so it's pretty cool. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Let's talk, about, let's talk about your cool pictures. All right. So let me straighten this out so we can see it. So, see. you know, right. so like just, you know, I, tell me, I, you know, so tell me, so, so tell me how you like what you're thinking, right? Because okay. I'm not a bird. I'm not a, I'm not a, a bird photographer and, you know, and I never, I, you know, of course I've shot pictures of birds, but yeah. I never look like I'm talking to the bird like yours does. <laughs> So I, this whole story right here is so amazing because I worked out with this guy named Sean at Planet Fitness. And one night he was like, I came home at night and I had an owl on my smoker. And I was like, no way. So, you know, essentially like I'm starting to pack my stuff. Like I'm ready to go that night. And, and but I did and I waited till the next morning and I spent probably about, five to six hours with about a group of nine of these screech owls. Neat. This one was a little bit more adventurous. This one was falling out the tree, hitting the ground. So this one's, this bird that you see here is a little lower than eye level to me right now. 
and I have my camera down on them like this. Mm -hmm. No, it's oh, great. I love that. Know, I kind of, you know, I just moved to where I found the opening for the trees so I can create just a little bit more light and, you know, kind of bring them eyes out to kind of match the backdrop. And, you know, it was no, fun, man. I, mean, I, yeah. love the, I love all the, the all of the tones and the semitones of the gray and white, you know, that really yeah. is, uh, it, you know, that that's really very, very cool. You know, and uh, it's just, you know, the waiting part, right? I mean, it, in yeah, here, I'm gonna tell you. So when I was shooting fashion, in six hours, I've done like twelve shots, like twelve different setups. You know, yeah. where yours is all about the waiting. You know, and it, it it's it's really very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna move on to the next one. But that's a really great story that yeah, your I mean, had an owl on his. Your friend had an owl on his smoker. How I'll be honest, you know this this owl. It makes me smile because I was walking under the tree with my gear because I'm I'm always looking around for a better shot. And this thing almost fell on me. I mean, it <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, yeah it makes me smile when I see him. Uh, so now we're gonna get into the colorful birds. This is All really right. this is pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So that's a Hispaniolan, that's that's a gross beak. Now, what's so strange about this, I mean, you can see that it's molting as well. You know, the feathers are starting to come in and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I took this in the Dominican Republic um, on a trip there. I actually went there on an anniversary with my girlfriend. <laughs> and then she went home after the weekend and I stayed for a week and I went into the mountains with my friend. Um, there's a place in western in the western part of the island that borders Haiti, and you just start climbing up this mountain. Three, four different habitats with just so many different spectacular endemic birds, and this bird is only found on that island. Neat, neat. Oh, I love it. It, it was, it was so cool. That is neat. I, you yeah. Know. So oh, how did wow. you get that bird? How did you get that bird to look at you like that? I mean, All right, so, so this is another one of them, like, moments because, so, and I'm wearing my Colorado hat, too. I've never been to Colorado, you know, and never, I don't know, I I guess when I go birding and I travel, I'm always, like, looking to go as far as I possibly can, and I don't do it in the States as much as I should, but I'm really happy I did. I was invited to go to Colorado and do this trip in the mountains, and I've never seen a mountain bluebird before. And, you know, when you see these birds, you're normally in your car driving and one will fly by, land on a fence post. And you just you kind of have to you have to move quick. I, I need my tripod to shoot to get it this in focus because my camera is just way too heavy for me without it. So, yeah, I jumped out the car, set up my gear and, you know, I just started shooting I inched a little closer, started shooting, inches a little bit more, and until I get to where I want to be. And this is yeah, no, that's outstanding. It's outstanding. It. it looks like you set it up in a studio, you know, because <laughs> the background is so the background is so out of focus and and compressed that it just and that and that the your plane of focus is like from the beak to like right behind the eye. It's just really. Yeah. It's like a fat, it's like a fashion photograph, you know. Thank you. I mean, for these two, you know, it's it's I'll be honest, um, depending on where your aperture's at during the shot and where you're at, where the bird's at, it's normally really hard to get that beak and focus like that. So I'll be honest with you, like it came out way better than I expected, to be honest, for this one. So very, very happy with this shot. And I, I got other shots in this. Same post, but he's just looking the other way, and it just wasn't as fun as this one. Yeah, it's, it, you know, no, this is like he's like he knows you're there, and he's saying, "Okay, man, take my photo." <laughs> yeah, no, it's very cool. Right. You know, Thank you. And this, you know, I so I can tell you that I have seen a toucan, and okay. um, when I lived in Mexico, we did a trip to um, one of the like the, the freshwater cenotes. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I, I to shoot. And there were actually two cans in the trees. Amazing. Where we, where we were, you know, and I got a photograph of one and it was like, you know, like 
like microscopic, so it didn't work. <laughs> but you know, so I always, you know, you always have a. But everybody loves these birds. These are really yeah. very cool looking birds. So this is the fiery build Arasari, and it's in the toucan family. It's a really, really special Arasari. Like you, it's not one that you normally see. You know, um, so this was a place that my friend uh, Janet took me in Costa Rica this year. Um, it was kind of like a fluke trip. Uh, one friend from um, La Fortuna um, really, really, you know, wanted to go birding with me. And he was like, hey, man, I'll drive. Just come. And I, I was like, how much? He was like, I don't know. Just give me something. <laughs> it's like, oh, but it was the most amazing trip. We just we just had our cameras and, you know, we just all went as friends, you know, and we got a chance to see some some beautiful birds and got to spend lot of time with them so yeah i mean that and this is a this is a beautiful bird you know yeah it what i oh, love yeah. is the is the, the, the way the it, it's all of the shading on its chest yeah. you know yeah, that, i love the eye like the eye ring and yeah that's incredible they're incredible yeah. birds really incredible bird all right yeah. so, i just uh, i i just think that this is again just really like you asked a bird to say cheese, you know, this is, this is actually, this is pretty far away too, for even my lens. Um, you know, I, I set it up back here so everyone can kind of get an idea of what I shoot with. Right. It's a 600 millimeter and I have a 1.4 converter on there. So, I mean, sometimes I'm shooting at 820, 840. Mm -hmm. So this, I was, this is really, this one's really special to me, not only because of the bird, but because of my friends I was with. Um, a friend named uh, Ivan had asked me to go on a trip to Putumayo in Colombia, but he asked me to come as a friend. He wanted to go to the South and I would pay for the lodging. I would pay for all the food and I wouldn't pay for any of the, the tour guide fees. So it was a win-win. But I also met another guy, um, named Guillermo that went on the trip along with us as a friend. And it was amazing. We, this right here, we're in a canopy We're it was the scariest thing because, you know, they tie you onto a hoist and you're like climbing this, this ladder looking thing up this tree. I was scared to death. And then he had to hoist my camera up another area. And I'm like, are you sure that's safe? But we get up there and it was just like, all oh, these birds were flying around us, but you know, they were kind of everywhere and it was so, uh, the canopy was so thin and not really, you know, it was tough to navigate and move around, but wow, when a bird landed and got somewhere near us, it was magic, man. Yeah, no, it, was, it is magic. It it really is. A, and you could see it. You know? It just brings back all these memories from there. You know, it was just, it was such an incredible trip and it rained half the time we were up there. So I remember my friend was just, he would just land in this bed inside this canopy smoking cigarettes while I was out looking for birds. You know, I didn't care if it rained or not, you know? Yeah, so. that, that, that's the, so that's the, one of the beauties of, um, of when you're shooting like this, you know, even, yeah. you know, that, when I'm shooting or when I'm looking through older photographs and stuff like that. Right. I remember like what it was, right. What the day was like and who was with me. I have some photographs of me shooting in Florida doing a fashion shoot and yeah. see, um, it's starting to get hot. So my shirt is open and I, you know, <laughs> wearing a bandana and then, yeah. You know, and we're in the middle of like setting up and I'm talking to the makeup guy and, you know, and, you, know, and, yeah. you know, and then, but I could, and I remember his name, you know what I mean? I remember the name of the makeup man and like That's where so we're standing in South beach before, yeah. you know, how I was setting it up. So I love that. I have to tell you that there, that's one of the things I love about like what we do, right. Is yeah. part of the thing that, Keeps so you many memories behind each yeah, photo. Part, it's what keeps you turned on about wanting to shoot and going to like these cool places, right? Never been to Colorado. So let's go to Colorado and see what happens, right? Then you find like this cool picture that you that you've done, and now like it all comes flooding back to you. I love that. Yeah. Part. 
I really do. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, and, you, know, and you know what's amazing about being in the canopy too? You know, a lot of places that I go, I can't lie. When you go to the tropics, they have all these feeders set up. And it's, yeah, it's easy because the bird's there. You still have to work and get a good angle. But when you're when you're in the south of Colombia and you're in Putumayo like this, all these birds, you really have to work hard for. And that's what I love. I love the challenge. And when I see this photo, I'm like, you know what? This was a challenge for me. And it's it's more rewarding for sure when I look Absolutely. at this photo. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, same thing with this. It's just, it's, oh, yeah. it's like, he, he's like, Hey man, take some pictures of me. <laughs> yeah. I really love, so this is a feeder bird. This was um, on my last trip um, in Colombia. Um, this was at a place called La Florida. They're, they're well known for like um, the multicolored tanager. Um, and they also feed, um, oh, what's bird is it? I call them jungle chickens because um, they're chestnut quail doves. I'm sorry. But, you know, the fun part about this place is that there are so many birds and they come all at one time, but they come really close sometimes. So playing with the depth and playing with different angles is was really fun. I remember um, on this day, it was raining all morning. So my friend was like, I'm going to go in the room and lay down, right? Not me. Even though I've seen all these birds before, I just stayed out there and I worked with each one. And I came home with like four something thousand images and my friend came home with like maybe six hundred because I just didn't want to give up. I just and and, and I, I, and I understand. Fun. I understand that. You know, it's so yeah. funny. Like I was away. My nephew got married. So I was away at his wedding and um, it was nice. It was in Virginia Beach. It was on the beach. Um, yeah. I was walking around in a tuxedo with bare with bare feet. <laughs> uh, you gotta love that. With all of his Navy buddies, thought was absolutely like the jam. They were like, "Dude, that is so cool, <laughs> right?" But I had my camera and I'm shooting pictures of my family, you know, and I'm just, you know, and I'm shooting pictures of the guys and his, you know, and the his new family and stuff like that, and. I'm starting, I'm doing an edit because they're finally back from their honeymoon. So I'm going to, nice. I'm going to upload it to, they have a. Oh, they you know, they're waiting, they're waiting to see everything. Yeah. They have a Google yeah. spot. So I'll upload it to their Google spot and they can do whatever they want. But it's so funny. One of my nephews said to me, you know, uncle Howard, like you're always smiling when the camera is up to your face. Yeah. And I was like, well, because it's like a happy place, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You disappear behind there a little bit and, you know, your eye is moving left, right, up, down and trying you're to gonna, size it up. And you're going to be creative, you know? Right. And, yeah. and I was like, I, it's because, you know, and I said to him, it's, it's because I'm totally in it, you know? Yeah. And, and that's like, that's the most, to me, that's the most wonderful thing that my career has given me. Yeah. You know, is this aside from like cool people, right? Cause I get to meet yeah. people like you and cool people like who I'm working with now, but you, you're continuously reloading on cool people, yeah. right? So you met Guillermo who invent, who, who introduced you to Anton, who like took yeah. you to this place that you never would expect, you know, that's See, what that's the thing. So the first time I went, I went with a guy named Ivan cause we were friends on Instagram then the second time I went, they invited me to Putumayo. I met Guillermo. And then Guillermo took me and my friend from Texas in November. You know? You know so, right? It's so, so cool. You're all these relationships. And I mean, I think that's the most important part because uh, I haven't built this as a business yet. I have all these ideas, what I want to do. But right now, it's just a hobby. But I, I want to go I want to go to the next level. But so, I think so that... I think that a little bit. If yeah. you're going to... Like if it was me and I were you and to take it to the next level, I would try to find a place to have a show. Yeah. And invite people in yeah. and, and invite them through your network. Right. If you were okay. to invite me. Right. I would take the invitation and put it out there for, you know, on LinkedIn. And it would be I would redo it on my Facebook and stuff like that. Because that's how you'll, you know, I could, you know, not that I have a gigantic network, but it helps your, you pick up momentum. Right. Yeah. And then after that, um, 
because some of them, you know, here, I'll, I'm going to go to the next photograph, but the because some of them are like this, which are like, so, I mean, nobody's going Jason to like sit in the rain and wait for this. You know what I mean? Wow. This is your thing. And it's, it's an art form and you, yeah. that, that's what I would look to do before okay. I opened up a website to like sell them, have a gallery show and someplace see, and, and then, see. And then see if you can see how it feels after that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this, Howard. Like, I don't know if my actual passion would be to sell my work. Like, I'll, I'll do it if I have to. But I would really, really love to do more of like, you know, just some some workshops and, and be hands on with people. You know, um, I'll be honest, since I've been in Chicago, I've been driving Lyft, right? I've been. I've been using the Audi you sold me to drive people around right now because it's the first thing I could do to start contributing to my household, you know? But I met this lady, right? And and I talk to everybody because I want to build these connections. But I met a lady, she's a, she's a violinist, right? And she's amazing. And she lives here in Chicago. Her husband is a birder, loves doing bird photography, but he's so frustrated because he cannot figure it out. And she was like, well, what if I paid you as a birthday present for him to come and help and show him how to shoot? I was like, that's right on my alley. That's I would a- love to do that more than anything. That's awesome. Um, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I would, wow. I would do that. No. I mean, you know, all he needs to, God, that that's a really interesting way of doing it, right? Because you know the... <laughs> You know the ins and outs, right? You know what it's like to be in a harness. You know what it's like to to be up in the sky with your camera trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to take the picture and then how they're going to let me down. You know, you know so, yeah. no, I think that that's, uh, you know, that it, I, I think, think that- with birding too, I, I watch a lot of people do bird photography and, and it is, it's all about being clever. It's all about being creative. You can't be afraid to jump down on the ground. You know, you you, you have to find the different angles to get the shot that you really want. No, I, you know? I remember I remember seeing one of your little videos of, you know, the you, you know of you being eaten by mosquitoes or have like the past oh. of eating, right right when you were eat, when getting so, eaten by mosquitoes. But the so that was if you're able, it, to, if you're yeah, able to get chairs. photographs like this. Right. Yeah. If you're able to get photographs like this and not get poisoned, I'm seeing <laughs> the value. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm seeing the value. Listen, I, 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 I said that I say that a lot. Right. Because yeah. so I also I'm part of a photo group and they depend on me for like real critique. Right. Shadow. It's yeah. fashion guys. It's fashion guys and gals and like shadow. And since I've been in the industry for, you know, for every every day of my life since I was 13. Yeah. Right. They depend on me to like be honest and not be uh, be and not be difficult, but okay. give instruction. And I have to say that when you have photographers or anybody who's listening to you say to you, Hey, check this out. It's so much better after I made the the edit that you asked me to make. I get like I get pleasure out of that. You know? oh, yeah. Because yeah. because because yes, I, do I see things differently? 100% because I have yeah. all the training, right? right? But can I instruct people and not make it look like I'm, you know, trying to one up them? Yeah, yeah. do that too. Yeah. And and it's, that's a that's a very I've learned over the years that that's a very hard trait, right? Because because listen, you know as well as yeah. I do, artists by nature are a little bit competitive and yeah. they get their backs up against the wall and it's all about you especially when you're saying, "Hey, could you move this? Could you move that?" right? Shadow, highlight, right? And you're talking kind of like technical and then you get to the fact that you know the photo might not be framed right or all of that right it's yeah. the people who can accept that that make it so pleasurable for me yeah right? and they all I mean, know my they all know my pedigree and i think that that's a that's an avenue for you that is really yeah. great because you got a cool because you're because you're a cool guy and you know how to talk to people right you know so i, I 
That would be but, awesome. I, I think I say, like even even when I when I'm places, you know, and I'm with my friends, you know, like if I'm if they're all the way over there and I'm I'm working for an angle, I'm like, get over here. You know, like you should see what it looks like through your camera right here. You know, and I'm sharing, you know, my positions and That's my so cool. with them. Sometimes they take it, you know, sometimes I even tell strangers too. I'm like, hey, if you Come down this way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have the ex you know you have the experience, so it's really. Yeah. Uh, but so this is a this is a black build mountain toucan, um, endemic, of course, to the Andean mountains and in their range there in like Ecuador and Colombia and Peru. Such amazing creatures. And it's neat how this blue on their face is also on their body. Yeah, that's very cool. They're very so cool. gorgeous, man. They're so much fun. Yeah. Oh my god, love yeah. them, love them, love them. Cool. And then this little guy. A red start. Yeah, those are they're pretty common in the canopies of Colombia and Ecuador and Peru again. They're they're kind of all over Venezuela. Yeah, but uh -huh. you got to go into the canopy to take their picture. So it's not oh, like so, sometimes you can get lucky. Like a lot of these birds will move in like a bigger group of, of birds. They call them flocks. And you could probably get maybe they're different than the flocks here because the flocks that move there you might have 20 different species in one flock and you don't know where to put your camera when that happens. And when right. they start coming down low, Oh, the heart starts beating. You're like, Oh, what's in there? You know, cause you can get a rarity, you know? So. Right. No, neat. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah this, this is another one of your, this is another one of your, um, as if the bird posed for you. It's like, <laughs> it's like you didn't, you like somehow telepathically said something to it. And it's like, what you know yeah. i get i, I it's really cool photo really. i have a really cool story about this one i'll try to make it short and sweet that's okay but this is a rufus vented ground cuckoo it is the ghost bird it is the top bird for any bird that goes into central america I, it's just you don't see them unless you get onto an army ant swarm so and I've known people that have seen it and they think it's a chicken. Like they don't know what it is, but for me, it was important. So I actually, um, I was with Jan and I was with another good friend and we had, we had got news that this bird was at a place in La Fortuna called Aeronaut Observatory. Okay. Here's, here's the difficult part. We had just left that area like two days before. We were already there and did not see this bird or nothing. And we were all the way in another area, probably about three hours away. And my friend the next morning, it's probably, I don't know, five, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there. And he was like, hey, they spotted this bird. Um, if there's an ants form there, it still might be there. Do we continue to Limon and finish our trip or do we double back and get this bird? And we doubled back and it was there. Cool. I cried. I, it's it's the only bird that made me cry. Like I was so emotional. Like I was hugging my friends and we were crying. Well, my friend like, that was with us, we were we were all crying. Tabo, Jan, me, we were just, we were all crying. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Like, you know, nobody, <laughs> see, nobody sees this bird, right? So very tough. And yeah, very you, cool. Very, very cool. So stick around for a while. So you get a chance to do photography, but it's still tough because it's in some real thick vegetation. It's real smart about coming out. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is the last photo. And I just, okay. you know, how could you not? This is another one of your, uh, somehow you telepathically told it, okay, show me portrait. You know, show me, right. show me profile, you know. He's like giving it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is an oscillated turkey. They're... Um, they're very special, like, you know, especially when you're in Belize or Guatemala. Um, wow. This one brings back so many memories too, because, you know, this one right here, um, is, was at a place called La Milpa in Belize. And it's like an old, uh, Mayan temple that hasn't been excavated though. It's really, really creepy place, but this one has gotten adapted to the tourists that are there. So Somewhat easy to take his photo. I mean, it almost is like you can ask him to turn his head and he will. Yeah. So no, this was this was great. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna 
I'm going to unshare um, right. and put us back. So right. um, I'm so happy that we finally got to do this. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is great. I, li listen, I've been a big fan of yours since like we met back yeah. in the in the auto days, in my auto uh -huh. days. And uh, and I really appreciate it. And, yeah. you know, I know that you you had some hardship and you seemed to overcome and your yeah, photos definitely. are really beautiful. And, you know, and, and thank you for coming on and yeah. discussing them with me because, yeah. you know, because like I said, I don't, you're the only person I know who's doing this and it's, it's at a super high level. So I truly appreciate it. But, and I, it's an honor to share and talk about these because it's just like, I am very, very passionate about what I do. Um, I love it. The people that I meet, the places I get to go, you know, it's unbelievable. You know, I, I could, I almost wish I had grandkids because I wanted to tell them about everywhere that I've been. Right. You know, and it's like, at first, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, just between me and you and our little podcast, but there was one point in time when I started doing this and I would go out, I, I kind of had a smaller lens. It would, you know, it was more adjustable and people would be seeing me and I'd be like trying to hide and like, but then eventually I was proud. Like I wasn't embarrassed anymore. I was like, okay, I'm a birder. I'm a bird watcher. I'm a bird photographer. Like I'm proud of this. This is like something that's really have made me who I am and, you know, it's humbled me. So, yeah, well, you should be because you're really good at it. And the yeah. fact that you're willing to go to all of these like cool places and do what you need to do to get the photograph is really uh, it's why the pictures are cool, you know, and it's why they look good because you're willing to, you know, to go that extra length to to get it to be right for you, which is yeah. really, uh, really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I keep on going back to the same places over and over. <laughs> well, because you're you're used to them and you like them, and, and I am. It's more about the friends there. I've I've met people, and I've been to some areas that just keep on bringing me back. It just pulls me in. Like yeah. if you ever go to Colombia, go to San Cipriano, like like a place like that. You know, you just ah, just I I I really feel like I'm just not even on Earth. You know, so. Yeah, no, it, it, it's really, uh, it's really special. And I, and, and thanks again. So, yeah, um, so you. we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna say goodbye, Jason. Right. It was a pleasure. Thank and you. we'll speak to you soon. We will. We'll Dude, be you safe, much, be okay? safe. And really you keep on doing the, keep on doing the great work. It's really beautiful. Thank you so much. You too, as well. Okay. My pleasure. Have a wonderful stay day. Right, Thank you. Care. Absolutely. Stay connected. Have a good yeah. one. Bye. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'd like to obviously thank Jason. He and I go back to my uh, auto days and looking forward to bringing you more talented people. Thank you very much.